Okay, um, it's 734. Um, the public hearing um, will start at 735, but here is the notice. The legal voters of the town of Bloomfield, Connecticut are hereby warned and notified that the Bloomfield Town Council will hold a public hearing pursuant to section 307 of the Bloomfield Town Charter on Monday, July 12, 2021 at 735 p.m. via Zoom. This meeting will also be streamed live on YouTube to consider the following resolutions introduced at the meeting of the council held on June 28, 2021. Resolution of the town council of the town of Bloomfield appropriating 29,255,000 for improvements to town libraries and authorizing bonds and notes and the same amount to finance the appropriation. Resolution of the town council of the town of Bloomfield appropriating $2 million for the restoration and improvements to Philly Park and authorizing bonds and notes and the same amount to finance the appropriation. Thank you very much. Um, I, I am, are there any, um, are there any citizen statements? I don't see any hands up right now. I actually have one hand, Linda Pagani will go first and after that will be Penelope Pearson, Linda. So please, once again, remember that we're asking you to please announce your name and your address. I'm asking Sharon and in India to please keep time. Everyone have a three minute time limit. Thanks, India. Linda Pagani for Guernsey Road. Um, I support both bond authorizations that are the subject of this hearing. I'm a big supporter of libraries because I think they are vital community resources. The building committee has put a lot of hard work into getting the project to this point. And I think the proposed improvements to the library system will greatly benefit the town. I've also followed the discussions on the Philly Park restoration and improvements as the project has gone through the budgeting process in various council committees, and I support this initiative as well. So I urge the council to pass these resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Penelope Pearson. I just unmuted. Can you hear me all right? Yes. All right, thank you. Good evening, Penny Pearson, 229 Duncaster Road. As both a lifetime, re lifelong resident of Bloomfield and the current president of the Friends of the Bloomfield Public Libraries, I'm speaking tonight in favor of the resolution appropriating funds for improvements to the town libraries and authorizing bonds and notes to finance the appropriation. In her charge to the library building committee nearly a year ago, the mayor noted that the overriding objective of the project is to effectively, economically, and responsibly maximize library space to provide the most benefit from a library services perspective to the community of Bloomfield. I think the library building committee has done an outstanding job of carrying out the steps of the phase one planning as charged and of imagining what a new Prosser Library and a renovated McMahon Wittenberry Library can be and can provide to our residents, our children, teens, and adults. The council members have been thoughtful in their questions, comments, and actions thus far as details have been presented to them in recent months. I ask you to continue to appreciate how essential these library projects are to the town of Bloomfield and its residents and take action to move these projects forward to a referendum in November. Thank you. Thank you. Next person is Stein Capperson. Good evening, everyone. Sten Casperson, Six Stonehill Road in Bloomfield. I am all in for the new and the renovated libraries. I'm in favor 
of the library referendum, even though it is a high cost item to the town. But the architect to date has, record, has reported only, has provided only one concept and one rendering for Prosser, which a large number of citizens have said they question or don't like. Personally, I do not like the fact that the main entrance is placed currently on Mountain Avenue with a porch and a balcony next to a major town highway and at a busy traffic light intersection. I'm hoping and other people are hoping that the building committee will require the architect to provide options for consideration of the Prosser design before a final selection is made. Thank you. Thank you. Next person is uh, Larry Pleasant. Sure, hi, Larry Pleasant, 16 Old Village Road. I'm gonna approach this a little bit differently in that um, given the conversations that, and the reports that have been made about Prosser Library and leaving it at its current location, and in, in the constant comments about access and security and all that stuff, um, the question I raise is whether or not we've allocated enough money to these projects to address those issues. Um, I tend to think that the scope for both library and Philly Pond is to maybe be greater than just brick and mortar, but everything else around it as well. And so I would ask that we you know, greater consideration for that whole corner area and whether or not we're really ready to go out if we are limiting ourselves just to brick and mortar. Thank you. Thank you. Next person is Karen Spout. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay, great. Um, and I don't mean to be incognito here, but I don't see my picture, but that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, I'm all in for the concept of money for libraries and the early part of my daughter's um, life was half of it was spent at the Bloomfield Library and it's an awesome place and does need renovation. I re resonate with the concern of a previous speaker regarding the design that we have seen seeming completely out of context with the center of our town, which is very beautiful and very New England, and it just seems stark and inappropriate. Um, so I would hope that there would be attention given to uh, citizen comments, as well as I believe there's some kind of architecture design board with no power, but uh, option to give opinions. I would hope we would listen to them um, and uh, react accordingly. I have nothing to say about the McMahon Library. I don't was not familiar with those renovations, but with the town center of town library, um, that is hugely influential uh, in its design. And our town center has such opportunity to be so beautiful and it's um, got a lot of need for, for work. And I, the library would be, can be a stunning addition and a quaint, lovely addition, or it can be the opposite. So uh, my comments are not about money, they're about design and hopefully listening to a lot more opinions and the architectural expertise of some of our town um, citizens. Thank you. Karen, would you mind giving your um, address, please, for the record? Sure, 35 Philly Street. Thank you. That's all, Mayor. Okay, so um, it is 740. Oh. <laughs> is that David? David <laughs> Like, why does it say Sharon How? No. Like just, I'm going to change it. I'm like, that just took uh, me off guard. Like, what? Hold on. <laughs> I, I thought maybe you'd call on me if you saw a different man. But I Funny. Have, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, there, there's a, a note from Ruth Ann Marchetti she had sent in. She didn't know if it made it through or not. I, if you, uh, She sent one to me. I can read it or someone else. So I'm, ass on the call. I'm assuming that, yeah, I'm assuming that we all got it. Yeah, that was um, because she didn't know she would be able to get in, but she is on a call. She would like to okay. speak. Okay, thank you. Ruth Ann, if you're there.
You're on mute, Ruthann. Ruthann? She's on there, but I don't. I know, I see that she's, she's on mute. Well, I do have her email for the record, just in case. But if you want to read it, okay. Deputy Mayor, you can. So, uh, yeah, well, her, her email basically was in support of the project. Her concern was that we don't choose either or project, but I do believe that we'll take it in for record. Is there any other, any other? No, but. Uh... Uh, Councillor Goff? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I realize it's a public hearing, um, but I, I did. Uh, I know we have members of the building committee here on, and and I think this is something we do need to take up before we have the referendum. I think we're all heavily in support, but one of the things I th I, I think I think we also want to you know want to do everything we can to make sure this referendum does pass. Um, one of the concerns I've heard voiced, and I heard a voice tonight, is when will we see I mean, there, there's concern that people will not be will not know what exactly they are voting on in terms of design, in terms of what this will largely look like in our town center uh, before the referendum. Uh, you know, and I don't know when we are going to have those renderings and when we are going to be able to actually say, this is what would go out. So I'm, I'm just asking the question of what is a tie to the building committee if, if through you, Madam Mayor, uh, of what is the, you know, what is the time frame on this? What are we really expecting in terms of coming to a, you know, here's largely, here's what, you know, within, within some level, within some margin of adjustment, here's largely what it is you will be voting on. So I think we have asked um, the building committee um, the last meeting um, for them to be able to come back with some renderings um, before we actually have to put the um, referendum out. And I do believe that they're going to um, come back with something. Um, I believe that they, they do have plans on um, updating the council, updating the subcommittees throughout the process before we even get to that. I don't know if they have a timeline that they can give you at this moment. Chairman Davis. You're muted. Yes, Madam Mayor, uh, council members, we do not have a certain date that we're still in the conceptual design phase and we will be you know, in that phase for the next 12 months uh, designing and things will change, but uh, we are hopeful to have uh, an updated rendering. I, I can't give you a date certain, but hopefully uh, prior to uh, November. So the only thing that I can ask the building committee um, is to please be mindful of everything that has been said. And I know that I've asked this before um, with everyone that has given their thoughts and their ideas about us having this one rendering and that the town is in extreme support of this project. The council is in support of this project. We wanna see this project go to referendum and not just go to referendum, but pass. Um, it is the, the library's time. <laughs> it's the library's turn. And we wanna make sure that it passes. So the only thing that I can go ahead and reiterate again is to please come back to us um, sooner rather than later with a couple different uh, or another rendering. And I know that someone has asked to see possibly a 3D rendering and not just the side view rendering. So uh, we just wanna make sure that we're doing everything that we're having everything that we need to make sure that it's a, a successful referendum. Councilor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, I, I totally agree with your comments. The one thing that I would like to add to that is to say that uh, the one thing that we have to manage is expectations, right? Because everyone would like to see the project they would like to see. I think attending uh, a lot of the building uh, committee work, I think through to the last showing that we had, I think a lot of some of those improvements were made in some of the adjustments in the rendering. So I just wanna just, just speak to the public 
uh, you know, hopefully we'll get closer to what I think some of the comments we have heard, but just know that the building committee is equipped to make a formal decision on something that will fit in the town and, and suit everyone, because obviously they have comments that it received from, you know, the various uh, um, items that went out to the public, the surveys and, and so on. So I just wanted to just manage that because we don't want to go into November and saying it's going to be exactly the way that everyone chimed in on. We just have to manage that. So I just wanted to add to that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So um, once again, I see counselors putting their hands up. So counselors, this is, it's a public hearing. And I know that we've gone down the rabbit hole because I've allowed a, a couple counselors to do it, but I'm going to pull us back out of the rabbit hole. If there are any other um, attendees that want to speak, I'm going to let those attendees speak and then I'm going to close the public hearing. Great. We can discuss at another time. Okay, so we do have Mr. Dennis Hobbs. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, as you probably, most of you probably know, I'm on the Philly Park Committee, so I won't make any comment about that other than hopefully that's gonna be supported. Um, yeah, I'm just a little confused as to whether or not we can do a referendum without seeing what the project is going to finally look like. Um, unless the referendum is just, you know, appropriating the money and the plans could be changed along the line. Um, is that, is that, do, do I have that right or? So I believe that Mark is, uh, on the phone, but I believe that the referendum right now is just about the cost. Okay. Um, I, I believe that there's, uh, and, and there goes Mark. Um, I believe the referendum is just about cost. I do hope and pray that we can see some kind of iteration of what the building would look like but it's also quite possibly that throughout the process, things would change. But Mark, is the referendum just for the cost? Yes, it would be to allocate and appropriate a certain sum of money, but it's still up to the council at some time, basically around no later than Labor Day to vote to put a question or two questions on the ballot. So even authorizing the issuance of bonds tonight doesn't commit us to doing so. Thank you. Next question. Well, Mr. Ka uh, Ms. Karen uh, Sprout would like to speak again. Yeah, yes, just to reiterate the design concerns, I would be, I would struggle with voting for this with, without more information about what it's gonna look like and that it would be suitable for our town center, which is the jewel of the town. And if we continue, if we can't keep, we can't mess that up. <laughs> okay, thank you. Miss uh, Gail Riley. Hi, Gail Riley, 8 Maple Avenue in Bloomfield. Um, I just like to reiterate um, my concerns too about I do believe we need the new libraries, both in the center and um, on the Blue Hill side of town. But I know personally, I do want to see what the library in the center possibly would look like um, in order for my support, because the renderings that you have right now, I do not support them. Um, I do not like the design. Um, and I am fully in support of um, Philly Park. That is um, a beautiful spot in our town center and um, it does need to be finished. Um, they've worked hard on it and I do hope that that um, bond is put on in November. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, Robert Dickinson. Mr. Dickinson, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, 400 Seabury Drive. And uh, I hope this uh, hearing is continued uh, so that uh, comments can be made uh, on uh, when, when the uh, final design is uh, decided upon. And uh, I'm very, very strongly in favor of uh, expansion of our, our libraries and modernization. Thank you. And also uh, 
Yep, definitely in, in favor of the Philly Park uh, par part of the this hearing. Thank you. Ms. Linda Pagani again. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Linda Pagani for Guernsey Road. Um, even though this is a public hearing simply on the bond authorization, I know other uh, people have been expressing their opinions on other aspects and I would just be remiss, which is why I wanted to speak one more time to say that I do support the concept even as it is now, knowing that it will be refined as we go through the process. But I think it it's exciting. I like it. And I really don't want the council to get the impression that every citizen is against this design. And the other thing, if my memory serves me correctly, when we had the public hearing on the human services referendum, we only had a concept then too. So that went forward and, and that's just how the process goes. Um, but I did, I did just wanna speak up again and say that some of us, and I hope a lot of us do like a modern approach. So again, thank you very much for your indulgence. Thank you. Um, that's it, Madam Mayor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. I do want to um, give Chairman Davis two minutes um, it, to respond to the design. Uh, and then after he speaks, the public hearing will be closed. Two minutes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to respond and reiterate what the uh, last speaker said that the human services project uh, went forward without any renderings. And similarly, if we want more renderings, it's going to require additional funds in order to uh, get the architect to do more work. Uh, that was not part of the original engagement. And so we are uh, refining the uh, drawings that have been put forth and they've already made some revisions to it and we'll continue to revise. But if we're looking at 3D revisions and optics, that was not in the original proposal. So we would need additional funding for that. But again, it's my understanding that it's not a requirement that renderings uh, be in hand in order to vote on a referendum because the human services project went forward without renderings. Thank right. you. So, so maybe we can't have 3D renderings, but maybe we can have renderings from different sides of the building. Maybe. Um, but India, uh, let's uh, call this public hearing to a close, please. Okay, 757. Excellent, thank you. So at this time, we're going to go into our regular council meeting. Please note that all counselors are here except Councillor DiLorenzo. I don't see Councillor Merritt, am I wrong? And here's Councillor Merritt. So please note that all counselors are here except Councillor DiLorenzo. At this time, let's go ahead and do our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice for all. Thank you. Um, are there any announcements and petitions? India? No, no, ma'am. Okay. Uh, any citizen statements? No. So we're going to go right into our um, report from our subcommittees. Once again, if your subcommittee have not met, please just let us know when is the next date of your meeting. Community Service Councilor Wong. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. We did not meet this month. The next meeting is the second Tuesday in August. Thank you. Um, administration and Education, Councilor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Administration and Education uh, subcommittee met on July 6th. And I'm just gonna be brief. Uh, we had a couple items that are still in committee that's being discussed. Uh, we had the council referred item 21-74 uh, discussion and possible action regarding the CGI promotional um, banner program. Uh, we had a robust discussion within committee. Uh, there is some recommendation that the committee made to staff. Um, uh, Mr. Geiner uh, is supposed to get back to us with a recommendation uh, so we could move forward and, and refer something to the full council uh, on that item. We also had discussions around um, uh, the University of Hartford and the off-campus uh, uh, um, housing and 
how some of those uh, situation has been uh, a menace in a sense with the noise to residents. And I know the town manager uh, was supposed to reach out to the chief of police and hopefully he can report back to us at our um, August uh, meeting. Uh, we also had a brief discussion about the, the minority set aside uh, policy. Uh, I know staff is working on getting a document in front of us and uh, for us to move ahead. That's something that's being discussed, I think for the last two years or so in regards to making sure that when we have, especially the projects in town is that there is a minority participation that, that makes sense. So that's something from an equity standpoint that staff will be working on to get something back to the full committee. Uh, the last item that was discussed is um, a policy in regards to flag flying. As you all know, uh, on uh, the 14th uh, of last month, uh, we did fly the, the pride flag. We didn't have a policy in place, but I know both the mayor and town manager did approve to fly the flag for two days. That went ahead, but we thought it was important to get a policy in place and the committee is currently working on that. There were some tweaks that were made. Uh, staff is working on that and hopefully uh, the town attorney will have an opportunity to review that set policy and get it back to us uh, at the next meeting and we could refer something to the full council for a vote. Um, and that was it uh, for my report. Finance is, um, India, what date is finance, uh, please? I did. Finance will be on uh, July 19th at 6.30. Next Monday. You're on mute, sir, Counselor. Yeah, and that's the end of my report. Thank you. Uh, public Safety Counselor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'll be very brief. We met before this meeting. We were trying to be, um, because of the council meetings tonight, we were trying to be uh, uh, efficient. Um, crime stats um, uh, were up 16% year over year. Uh, we are now up 4% for the year. Um, not great news, but part of, part of that is something that people have been reading about in the paper, which are auto theft incidents. Uh, and as I pointed out at the meeting, we're lucky we have not had an incident like in New Britain where a jogger was uh, killed by joyriding teenagers. Uh, but you've been probably reading about this in the, um, in the, in the Hartford Current or other, other things online. Uh, so the chief, of course, uh, gave his usual um, comment about making sure your cars are locked, don't leave your key fobs in the car uh, to prevent this from happening because a lot of this is, is preventable. He has been meeting with other officers uh, in the region, other chiefs in the region, uh, because they're trying to take some concerted action toward this. Uh, there are currently three uh, full-time vacancies on the force. Uh, there are also a couple of vacancies in the dispatch unit, which they, they uh, anticipate being filled fairly shortly. For the month, there were 44 more vehicle accidents. Um, there were two citizen complaints uh, against the police, but by under investigation, both of those were shown to be um, um, not, not valid complaints. Uh, and in fact, in the second instance, after looking at the body cam tape and, and meeting with the people, uh, the uh, complainants withdrew the, withdrew the complaint. Um, BVA has two new members, so we're getting some, um, some activity on the volunteer ambulance front, which is a good thing. That committee continues to, uh, the EMS committee uh, continues to work on a road forward to make sure that we have, you know, we can hopefully keep a strong volunteer ambulance um, uh, committee and we'll be meeting later in the month to discuss uh, some of the data they've gotten uh, from comparing to other towns and information about what's going on. Uh, both fire chiefs gave short um, uh, updates. Fortunately, no major fires. Uh, as usual, uh, Blue Hills and um, uh, Center had about the same number of calls. Uh, uh, Blue Hills has had 36 calls in June and 255 year to date whereas um, the Center Fire District had 47 for the month, but 236 year to date. Uh, and as we pointed out, it's always a good thing when uh, uh, they have calls, but nothing very serious. So the, the fire departments were active, but fortunately with no, um, no major emergencies. Uh, the other thing the committee did tonight, um, uh, last month we had a report from Attorney Needleman on the 
uh, possibility of being able to pass an ordinance prohibiting or limiting, I, sh I should say, limiting truck traffic of certain sizes on certain town roads where sometimes the trucks stray in trying to create pass throughs. Um, there will be some work involved with that, but the committee voted unanimously to move forward with having uh, Attorney Needleman draft the required ordinances. There are several pieces to it. Uh, so that will be hopefully back for public service in the next uh, uh, public safety in the next um, month or two, and then on to the full council if we uh, if we find them uh, useful. I think that will be something a lot, I know a lot of citizens complain about. I think all counselors hear this. And uh, hopefully we can do something that is effective, but um, uh, you know, uh, wor works well for both the town businesses and the town residents. Uh, so that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, committee on committees, uh, Councilor Calhoun. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We met on June 30th. Committee on Committees, and um, we have appointments to move forward to the council for specific boards. Um, prior to me stating who those people are, um, we, we agree with Committee on Committees as a body that it's important that uh, those that will be volunteering would at least come forward during the one session that we have um, to introduce yourselves to the town um, be clear on why it is that you are interested in these boards and commissions. We welcome you, absolutely, but it's important for the town to at least know who you are. Um, with that stated, uh, the appointments that we would, I would like to recommend moving forward is the library trustee, Kat, uh, Kathy Holler at 32 Scott Drive. And I, I will go through the names and then we can uh, move on each one after. Right. So we're that's on the agenda, Counselor. Yeah. Later on so, the agenda. Yes. So with that said, we um, met again and have these persons to be named to as recommended to uh, the body. Thank you. And, and I just want to make clear um, that we will have to set with India another um, another time frame because we do have additional people hopefully that we will be able to get um, onto that time frame. Thank you. Excellent. Land use and economic development, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we did not meet since our last meeting. Our next meeting will be next it will be Tuesday the 20th of July. And at that time, I think we will be uh, very close to having our policy, our TIF policy completed. Uh, there have been several rounds of uh, information that have been passed back between the committee members, staff, and our attorney, our TIF attorney. And I think uh, comments uh, are reaching a point where I think we'll, we'll find some agreement, hopefully this, uh, this next session, so that we can get that to council and move forward with that important project. Uh, there'll be other things discussed, but but uh, this will be the ho hopefully the only one we'll take action on. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving into council business 21 slash 22 dash 01 discussion and possible action regarding preparation of RFP for the sale of 15 Douglas Street. Is there a motion on the floor? Deputy Mayor? Yes, Madam Mayor. I, I'd like to place this item in motion, motion on this item for the uh, staff to prepare an RFP for the sale of this particular property, which as you may remember, was already optioned off to a previous developer, which uh, did not succeed. Uh, this is a sit town owned land. It's sitting there not doing anything and it won't until we have somebody doing something with it. <clears throat> the purpose of the RFP is to define, find who would be interested in what kind of use. At our land use and economic development committee uh, in May, we recommended we move forward with the RFP. We did also highlight that there may be some objections to developing it for certain uses, particularly housing, as some people may feel as though it may be an environmental justice issue because of where it's located. We don't know that. We, we think that it's uh, uh, there still may be somebody who is interested in building some form of housing there. But where the purpose of the RFP would be to uh, 
see who is interested in doing what, and then we can make a decision. And the people of the community can decide whether it's an economic uh, injustice issue or not. So that, that's the purpose of the, the, uh, the, the motion is to move toward an RFP. There is one in your, in your packet that was provided by the town uh, planner. That's a suggestion. It may be, he, uh, he, we talked a little bit about that. And I think he has, uh, he's ready to move forward with, with his recommendations. To is, there, is there a second? Uh, Councillor Politis gave a second. Any discussions? Sorry. <laughs> no, uh, Jose, would you like to say something, sir? No, just just uh, reiterate what Con uh, Council Deputy Mayor said. Uh, this this started out really as a letter from uh, Lance Gordon, I believe, that sent to the council a few months ago, and he had a proposal, I guess, from one of the companies that had a bid on the previous RFP um, to do uh, what he called that Alice type housing, asset limited income, uh, constrained employed. I think is is, is the acronym. That, that um, which is not uh, necessarily uh, it, it, it's 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 not low. I would call low income housing, but it's certainly a, a rent or or controlled uh, uh, qualified housing. The people who who are um, middle income uh, employed in the town, teachers, police officers, firemen, that that type of that type of group, but. Uh, uh, I think it's at the subcommittee level, it, it was discussed to that that property used to be in zoned industrial. It's at the end of an industrial road. So I think we, we uh, we're going to leave that, you know, the consensus was to leave the RFP as open as possible and take in as many uh, different ideas as, as possible and perhaps have the council choose what they think is going to be the best. Uh, the, the draft RFP that you see there is ex just about exactly what was put out back in 2010. I, I got to say, I have no rights of authorship on that. I, you know, I figured we'd start with that. And then, uh, you know, if you can pass a resolution, just directing staff to come up with something. And I'll work with Nancy uh, Haynes to come up with a, a, an RFP that, that will meet the town's requirements. Any other comments? I can say that one of the complaints that I've hear, heard about Bloomfield is that we don't have affordable housing, um, that the apartments are going up and they're not affordable for everyone. So I just wanted to put that out there if it's worth anything. <laughs> um, seeing that there's uh, no comments, all in favor of this motion? Madam Mayor, please, uh, we need Ooh, a roll cool. call vote. Excuse me, sir? All votes need to be a roll call vote when we're operating strictly on Zoom. I'm not, uh, your, your, your words a little muddled. When we are holding a meeting strictly by Zoom, all votes must be a roll call vote. Oh. Unless, unless it's a unanimous vote, then we need to go through that. Okay, so let's, once again, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. It's you, uh, Councillor Wong. I can't see you, but I'm assuming that you're voting in the affirmative, Councillor. In favor, aye. All right. So it's unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Twenty-one slash twenty-two dash o two. Consider and take action regarding tax refunds. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? There's a second. Are there any discussions? Seeing there is none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 21 slash 22 dash 03. Consider and take action regarding appointment to the Library Board of Trustees, Councillor Calhoun. Sorry, Madam Mayor. Yes, we would like to um, recommend um, Kathy Haller, 32 Scott Drive, to the um, library trustee board. Is there a second? <laughs> Councillor Politis, second. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 
Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 21 slash 2204, consider and take action regarding appointments to the Public Art Commission. Councillor Calhoun. Yes, we have two um, persons that we would like to move forward, recommend to the council, excuse me, to the council. Robert Ike, Republican, 90 Darby Street, and Leslie Mills, on affiliate 66 Brown Street. Coun Councilor Polite is second. Are there any discussions? Councilor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to add that I'm happy to see that we're moving forward with this. Uh, we were basically trying to fill the various uh, spot on the committee with minority representation. Um, and hopefully this committee can start doing some work. I think that the community is excited uh, to get the arts um, within the town. And there's a lot of folks that are willing to start finding financing to, to really bring the arts to Bloomfield. Uh, so I'm happy to see this going. So hopefully in the next month or so, uh, we can have our first um, meeting. Thank you. Any other discussions? Seeing there is none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 21 slash 2205, consider and take action regarding appointment to the Lower Farmington River and Salmon Brook Wild and Scenic Committee. Councillor Calhoun. Yes, uh, Committee on Committees would like to uh, recommend Lucy and her name is, is pronounced Air. We uh, clarified that with her at our meeting um, of 39 Cold Spring Drive. Councilor Polite is second. I like that, so <laughs> any discussions? And excuse me, Madam Mayor, she is an unaffiliate. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 21 slash 22 dash 06, consider and take possible action concerning settlements of pending litigation. And I believe that we're going to be discussing that in executive session. So at this time, if we can have our report from our mayor and our town manager, um, I'll go first. Um, this past weekend, we were able to welcome two new businesses to the town of Bloomfield. Um, uh, one was Amnes, and um, that's a wonderful restaurant located here in Bloomfield. It's at the Old Sloppy Waffle. If you have not been there, please, please take your time. Go get some good food. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. For all the counselors that have eaten at Amna's, just shake your head in agreement. <laughs> we also welcomed diamonds, glitter, and pink. Now that is a salon. They do hair, they do nails. There's a barber in there. There's a massage place in there. There's an esthetician in there. So please, um, uh, patronize, um, if, that's, if that's the word, um, our businesses. Um, we want to see them succeed, our small businesses here in town. Um, I do want to just uh, step back um, on something that Councilor Curtin uh, talked about in his report, the Minority Set-Aside Program. I know the state of Connecticut has a program, and Bloomfield can create their own program as long as they don't go below the state's limits. So with the projects coming into Bloomfield, I do believe that this is the best time for us to start the discussion and hopefully put something in place before the building gets started. Um, I don't know if they had discussed in uh, public safety about the traffic calming um, efforts on Elizabeth Avenue. I know that there will be a meeting. They did? Well, yeah, the, the next... The next meeting will be on Elizabeth Avenue, that whole section Correct. of streets, and Maple and Brown, yes. Correct. And that's, and that's in early August. We didn't yeah. get a date. There, yep. Um, I have the date someplace, but it, would be, it will be posted, and letters will be sent out to the community so that they can hear and understand 
Uh, there are some um, suggestions in the, the making of trying to make that area um, a little bit safer as far as traffic. Um, they're looking at putting in speed bumps. Um, they're trying to figure out what type of speed bumps need to be put in. So please, if you're listening and you live in that area, it is being addressed. Um, there will be a Dad's Hero event here on September 11th in um, partnership with the town of Bloomfield and um, My People Clinical Services and um, Rickford. Um, oh my gosh, what's the other? DCF. Huh? DCF in the village. DC, thank you, thank you. DCF and the village. It's going to be an amazing event Bloomfield. Uh, one of the things that we have been able to do successfully is make partnerships. And this is another partnership that's going to benefit the town. There's also uh, some things in the works with uh, the Hartford Hospital and also with Anina, Anika Noni Rose, the, the Disney princess that we just honored. So there's some great things coming in Bloomfield. We will make sure that our town and our residents know exactly what's going on and make sure that you're abreast of everything. I believe that's all that I have. Missed up uh, once again for those who um, were at the interviews or the community interviews for uh, the new town manager. We have made a conditional offer. At this point, they're going they're going through background checks and all of those things that we, you know we're scratching services, looking underneath carpets, opening doors. Um, once all of that is done, the council will then give a very detailed update. I think that's it. Mr. Shank. Uh, yes, I just have a few items. Again, taxes are due by August 2nd. If you haven't had an opportunity to make your donation, uh, now's the time to, uh, to step forward. Uh, COVID, uh, I'm happy to report that we have not had any deaths from COVID in over 10 weeks, 11 weeks, at least as reported by the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District. So that's a positive uh, signature for the, for the town. Uh, some road uh, issues um, and, <clears throat> and some other uh, town-wide things. We received a, uh, a correspondence from uh, the uh, Tennessee Pipeline uh, Company that they are going to be doing maintenance on the gas pipeline that goes through uh, Bloomfield. I believe they have a list of property owners and have contacted them, but uh, in case people see uh, clearing uh, along uh, what may appear to be open spaces, it could be the pipeline uh, people uh, maintaining that. In terms of other maintenance, uh, the state of Connecticut has informed us that they will be doing re uh, milling and repaving on Blue Hills uh, Avenue uh, this summer. So you can expect that there'll probably be some traffic delays uh, uh, in the coming weeks as they go through the uh, the repaving uh, project. In terms of Bloomfield, uh, we have received notice that the state will be replacing the bridge at the intersection of Park Avenue and, and Crestview Drive next summer, not this summer, but next summer. And uh, that will be done during uh, when school is out. And so there will probably be uh, further information coming along as that project uh, gets closer to implementation. But uh, it's kind of an early warning notice. I think the uh, Park Avenue is going to be impacted for about 10 weeks uh, uh, during the summer next year. Uh, that's in uh, 2022. So. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a heads up. So that completes my report, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Town Manager. Um, so we know that there's been a lot of rain taking place here. And for the last two weeks, we were not able to have the concerts on Rockwell. But we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that it's gonna be dry on Thursday so that we can resume our concerts on Rockwell. So please, 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 if it's dry out, get your friends, get your lawn chair, there will be a food truck out, please come out in support. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion for the approval of our special meeting on June 30th. Is there so a motion? So move. Uh, Councilor Curtin, Deputy Mayor second, any discussions? 
All in favor? All right. Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Councilor Politis abstained. Mark. Mark. Yeah, I think we have to do based on. That's what I was about to ask. Yep. If I had to do yep. a roll call. Do roll call. Yep. Okay, Councilor Curtin. Aye. Councilor Calhoun. Councilor Goff. Aye. Deputy Mayor. Aye. Councilor Merritt. Aye. Councilor Wong. Aye. Aye. Can I have a motion for the special meeting on June 29th? So move. Second. Second. Councilor Curtin and, Council and Deputy Mayor. Um, there's going to be one extension. So I'm going to, Councilor Curtin. Aye. Councilor Calhoun. Aye. Councilor Goff. Aye. Deputy Mayor. Aye. Councilor Merritt. Aye. Councilor Wong. Aye. Aye. At this time, we're going to have our council comments. I'm going to start with Councilor Politis. Um, just a quick note to all my constituents that I was unable to attend the, um, the meetings on the 29th and 30th. Apologize for not being able to get to it. Um, did have some uh, personal business for my own things that I had to take care of. Um, uh, I think that we've uh, made a good decision and look forward to hopefully uh, them coming on board. Um, and um, that's it. Other than uh, try on this restaurant, it's excellent. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Calhoun. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And deliberations um, as far as the interview process went well. I think we've come to um, a good decision, a good recommendation for the town. And again, we did have very good candidates to um, select from. Um, and I'm hoping that we are in a good place where this will be a long-term appointment. And um, thank you very much. Councilor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I, I, I uh, I'm very, I, I have not tried Amna's restaurant yet, but I am very anxious to because I've heard nothing but good things about it. And I, I was uh, there at the opening with all the energy on Saturday. Um, we did go inside, but they were already crowded. So uh, that's something that uh, I'm looking forward to. I, I did want to make one, um, one comment about, um, you know, from all of the, from the earlier discussion, um, the public hearing discussion, a bit abbreviated as appropriately because this was a public hearing to hear from the public. Um, I, I just want to come back to the issue of what it is we are looking at with the library and, and make two points. One is um, I think that there are a lot of people who will make a decision to vote for the library one way or the other, not just based on design. But I also hear residents who say, I don't want to go in not knowing what I'm going to get. And that's the, that's my major concern at this point, that um, there, there have been a lot of people who, and you heard some of it tonight, people who voice like, I'm in favor of this, but, and I do think that we, I do think that it is something that we hopefully would be a little further on. I did want to come back for just a minute to the human services facility, though, several years ago. Uh, it is completely correct that we did not see mock-ups of the human services facility. We did not see a lot of plans. But I would remind the council uh, and, and anyone listening, part of the reason for that was there was a lot of work done on the library project. And at the time, it was anticipated because of the cost that the library project would be the project moving forward. We did have 3D, 3D drawings, renderings, not only of the plan for the renovation of Prosser and its current location, but also several, several plans and, and renderings for what it would look like on other spaces in town, particularly the town hall site. Um, so I do, I, I, I am sympathetic to, uh, completely sympathetic to the building committee in terms of, I realize a lot will need, you know, there's still a lot of time. But again, I think one of the things we're all concerned about here is that we have a referendum that goes to the public and that passes. And so I, I, I just ask that um, what the mayor said earlier uh, and emphasized that the sooner we can get some revised renderings um, that maybe are something, a different concept, 
you know, not just tweaks to the concept that has been presented, but other concepts um, that people may be interested in and have has come out in the discussions. I think that would be a good thing. Um, so that's that's my comment on that. I want to make it clear. Uh, I'm not I'm not demanding any particular design of the library myself, but I want I want to have something that the public wants and will support. Thank you very much. Councilor Merritt. I can only agree with that. And I think it would be an awful shame if having put the library supporters through so much in so much in the last 10 years, uh, this will be the third or fourth time around um, that we don't have a referendum that passes. So to, to have some have it what is perceived as an oddball design of the library um, kill a referendum would be a real shame. We do need we do need a new library in space and and I hope that we can come up with some a design that people can support. It would be a shame to to lose this referendum. Thank you. Councilor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to make a slight. Uh, uh, I just want to make a slight, just for the the, the view and audience. Uh, the library has never went through a referendum. Just I want to just clear that up. It's never made it through that process because the council, previous council, has never moved it forward. I think what happened with with the Human Service Building and the library, they both were projects that were in the pipeline. The council at that time made a decision to move ahead. With a human service building. So, so I just wanted to clarify that in regards to a referendum. I will just say in regards to, I agree with the comments that we want to make sure that a building that we build in the center of town, in the town, that we get support on what that building look like. I just want to make sure we manage expectation. And I would encourage everyone that was at the meeting tonight, because I've attended most of the building committee meeting, uh, for this same purpose, because I wanted to see the process. And I believe that the committee is very accommodating and they do listen to input and stuff from the community. So I encourage folks who are listening here tonight to attend those meetings. I know there's one coming up pretty soon. And basically voice your opinion. I have seen some uh, adjustments to the rendering from when it initially was uh, shown to the committee and the public uh, at that point. So I would just encourage that process. And I would just add in my ending on that topic is that we will never be able to get everyone in the town to agree on the project. They will always have folks on both sides who wanna see something. So we just have to trust the process and please do attend those uh, building committee meetings and voice your opinions. And I believe that a project will be in place that I think everyone could coalesce around. Uh, I just wanna first just, uh, I want to give my uh, my colleagues some credit, both uh, Deputy Mayor Mann, uh, the, dep uh, the mayor and Councillor um, DiLorenzo who are not here tonight. I think for the body work that they had done through uh, the committee process in getting us, the search committee and getting us some really viable candidates uh, that we were able to go through and make a decision I think was really helpful in that process. So I just wanna commend them for the work that they did along with staff and, and the town manager, our currently our interim town manager. So I just wanted to say that uh, this weekend, once again, was a very exciting weekend in the town of Bloomfield with, you know, Amnes, the new restaurant opening. Obviously, just full disclosure, I've had stuff there way before during the soft opening, but the food is great. It encouraged the public. I think we have some really good restaurants in the town of Bloomfield. And, and that's just an addition to that. Uh, and, and I just wanna say, I, I'm excited with uh, what's going on. Uh, I believe the projects that we have on the, the table uh, with a successful referendum, I think that will be the start of getting some activities within the center of town and attracting new businesses, uh, enhancing the Wintonbury Mall. I think there's a lot of good things and I just wanna continue. I wanna personally thank staff for the work that they're doing behind the scenes to, to get this going. I know Nancy and everyone else, uh, the finance department and so on. So just thank you all for the work that you're doing and we appreciate it. And uh, to the public that continuously come out and provide us 
input and feedback. I think it's important. I've always said that we are here to represent you. We're an extension of the public and your voices are important to this process. So I just wanna to continue to encourage you to come out and lend your voices. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilor Wong. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a really quick quote. I do agree with all of my, my colleagues and their comments. Um, I was once a child with a dream looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship looking down to our beautiful earth, to the next generation of dreamers. If we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Richard Branson. Is, is he still in space? <laughs> 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 um, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I also want to comment on uh, Emma's opening. I think it's terrific. It's exactly what we want to see in town, local people taking a piece of ownership of our town activity. And it's the mom and pops that really make our commercial uh, corridor exciting and workable. And that's, uh, we need to encourage more of that. We need to support them as they go forward. And I really was excited to be part of that. Um, a couple of comments. Um, I was glad to see my friend Bob Ike get appointed yet, to yet another committee. <laughs> I really, this man is so overused. I don't know how he, how he finds time for himself, but I, I, I wish the Republicans could find somebody else, but it, not because he's not worthy of it, but because he can't do everything as well as, uh, Possibly considering unaffiliated because it, it, we're really we're really not getting enough uh, uh, names uh, to come in and offer. I, I look to the, for example, the design review board. It's had vacancies for months. Now we're coming into a point where we really need to have those vacancies filled, especially if we go forward with TIF. And I and I think we need to go out and and really try and get up, get some more names. So so that's a thought I had too. And then again with with regard to the library, yes, it's true. You, you may never please everybody. But I think people have registered some concerns. Some of those concerns were kind of passed over lightly and revisions that showed small eyebrows over the windows and a little of this, a little of that, but really didn't address the issue. So I don't know what it's possible to do between now and, and November. But when we talk about options, I mean, they could be sketch options as well at this point. We know how much money we want to spend. Maybe there's more work that can be done to see what other opportunities can exist. I think it's important that we, we get enough uh, people in the community to see something that they like and, and, and can vote to support this. Uh, you, staying with one design and saying, well, it's the one we got and it's the best one, uh, may, not, may not sell. So I, I'm, I, I reiterate the concern mentioned by uh, uh, Councilman Merritt and others before me. So I thank you for that. And um, so I think well, that's, my, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, I'll go ahead and um, get on the Amnes bandwagon because I've eaten there <laughs> and, and I will continue to eat there. It's a wonderful restaurant. I have two quotes tonight. If you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. Service to others is the rent you pay for the room here on earth. With that, I'm going to ask for a motion to go into executive session with the town manager, the town attorney, Sharon Howe, the assistant to the town manager. And is it Mr. Pierce? Attorney Pierce. Attorney and, Pierce. And attorney Mona Starsky. And attorney- uh, Mona Starsky. That one right there. Don't <laughs> move, the move. Okay, I got a motion, I got a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed, any abstentions, motion carries. Are we coming back? Okay. Yes, Joe, we are.
Mayor? I'm here. Mayor, I just want to give you a heads up. Um, I know we didn't talk about it, but those pop-up shops, I mean, we're back in session. We missed those. Those were pretty good with the young people in town, the Winterberry Mall. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. 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 Um, inspired. Yeah, the pop-up so, shops. Yeah. While we are here waiting, um, Councillor Curtin did remind me that we went to um, a pop-up shop at the Inspired Girls Club in the Winterberry Mall. Now the pop-up shop were young girls, I think from like nine to like 14 or so. And it was amazing to see all these young entrepreneurs. We had girls that were making jewelry, girls that were um, doing painting. This one young girl did beautiful crochet work so um, if you are around, um, visit the Inspired Girls Club in the Wintonberry Mall. Um, it's also a beautiful space that you can rent to have your own um, event. Um, there's some great things happening in Bloomfield. So please, once again, support our small businesses. I just want to do a shame, shameless plug just to say the potential of the Wintonberry Mall if it's being used uh, for activities like this because that area was buzzing uh, this weekend. So that's just possibilities. So I just wanted to add that in. Thank you very much, sir. Um, is, uh, uh, you came up as Sharon again. I think you like doing that. I think I like you, that. Like, you like seeing my reaction to that. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon number two. I move that the town attorney be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Jacobs Vehicle Systems versus the town of Bloomfield concerning the real property located at 22 East Dudley Town Road, Bloomfield, Connecticut, for a fair market value of $8 million and an appraised value of $5,600,000. Second. Second. All right. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, Danielle? No, that was I. I was just oh. like, okay. <laughs> That's about, come just on time now. delay. All right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Is there a motion on the floor? Don't we have oh. <laughs> What, what we were have you two. saying? Right. What were you saying, Councillor Curtin? No, no. I, okay. I thought you were closing out the meeting. We have to do the law. No, no. Is yeah. there, I yeah, think yeah. Councilor Calhoun has it. Councilor Calhoun's about to make a motion. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion for the second version of what we're here to vote on. I don't have the detail. <laughs> I'll Who has the word? Oh, I got it. Who okay. has the wording? All right. Um, move that uh, the uh, attorney David Monasterski enter into a settlement, a settlement, a settlement with settlement with Blake. That's all we know. Versus the town of Bloomfield for seventy five hundred dollars in exchange for an a an authorized settlement agreement. Okay. Cal Councilor can, Calhoun uh, seconded that. Uh, can I make a just a friendly amendment? Absolutely. I, I think it's authorized the town attorney and attorney uh, David uh, Monas Monas. Yep. Yeah. I, I will I will accept that from I accept I accept that too. <laughs> David. Move, uh, hold on. David hold forward. on, Joe. Hold on. David, are you accepting that? Absolutely. Yes. And Stephanie, you're seconding it again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, be quiet. Aye. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Can someone please forward those motions to me? To you? Any okay. any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Joe, go ahead and Nobody make a motion. Jumped. Second. 